It's a third generation, still privately owned company in Italy. They've been building great hunting and hiking boots since the 70s over in a small little village in Italy. I whipped out a roll of duct tape and he kind of looked at me like, you moron. <laughs> <laughs> if we put that four flex on there stiffness wise, it's going to offer a more stable platform and it's also not going to make your feet flex in a weird way. We use what's called a board last. And so if we imagine pulling an insole out of your boot, think of using that shape on top of our midsole to create that stiffness. What a lot of people don't realize is a performance sock is moisture wicking. It's gonna wick water into your boot just like it's gonna wick it out. We get that question on the phone and at these shows all day long of, you know, which one of these, I've got 25 boots up on the wall, which one of these is right for me? Y'all ready for your dose of flyover state spirit? Straight from the concrete jungle? Well, put down your latte and pull on your boots. It's time for Living Country in the City. Hey, y'all, welcome to episode 106 of Living Country in the City. Now, if y'all are anything like me, I'm sure you are sick of coming back from your hunts and your scouting trips or even just time in the woods hiking or camping and having to do the good old-fashioned head-to-toe search for ticks. Y'all, make sure you head on over to Sawyer.com slash Lyme hyphen disease. Check out all the great products that Sawyer has to offer. Y'all, make sure you treat your gear, your outdoor clothing, your hunting camo with Sawyer permethrin. It is fantastic for six weeks or six washes, so y'all, you don't have to keep reapplying this time after time. It'll help keep you safe, it'll help keep those ticks off of you, and it'll help protect you and your family from all the nasty diseases that ticks can carry, including Lyme disease. So head on over to Sawyer.com slash Lyme hyphen disease. Check out all the awesome products, info, and infographics that Sawyer has to protect you this summer. All right, y'all, on to today's episode. Back at Hunt Expo in Salt Lake City, I got a chance to sit down with Corey Beckendorf of Crispy Boots. Y'all, a long while back, I got to sit down originally with Scott DeYoung of Crispy, talk through some of the amazing products in their lineup. Well, y'all, a lot of new cool stuff has come out, and Corey sat down with me, and we really go through how to select a boot for hiking or hunting and all of the cool stuff that Crispy has to offer in their lineup, y'all. This will be a very valuable episode for those of you trying to pick out your gear for this hunting season, those of you that may be looking for a new pair of boots. So y'all, make sure you check this one out and enjoy episode 106 with Corey Beckendorf of Crispy Boots. Testing. Here we are. Sunday morning, final day of day, Hunt Expo. Is it day three, day four, something like that? I don't I know. Lost count. Day four. Here we are. <laughs> day 10 of Hunt Expo. Yeah. Oh, man. That's my worst nightmare. We've run out of hot dog buns. <laughs> <laughs> the water's all gone. I've, re- I've resorted going over to the jerky booth. Yeah. I've spent $700 alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Phone scope's been sold out for six days. <laughs> Funny enough, though, Mountain Up still has yep, more Ignite. Yep, there's more Ignite. <laughs> We're now taking it intravenously. Yeah. There's, just, <laughs> there's just a giant pipeline <laughs> coming from the main office. <laughs> We're all sitting in chairs with IVs hooked up to us. We go Ignite. up. You know, yeah. you know that scene? Did you see the new Mad Max movie? I did not. Yeah. Okay, there's this scene where it's like in the desert and like whatever, the, the guy that's like the, the king of the community uh, he, like, pulls open this switch, and all this water pours off this cliff down under the the peasants <laughs> below. And they're all, like, running out with, like, broken bowls and stuff like that. And, like, That's the Mount um, Ops booth. That is, that, is what, <laughs> that is the picture I had in my mind where we're all sitting there, like, starving and being stuck in Hunt Expo. And then Mount Ops opens the gates and, uh. and uh, <laughs> Pink Lemonade Ignite comes yeah. pouring out. <laughs> Got any tiger blood up there? Oh, my gosh. That's I'm pretty sure what this is with the citrus. I'm a mixer. I can't yeah. do the. Yeah, I'm. I can't I'm do the one opposite. Flavor. I could care less what flavor it is. I just down it. And, oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. So after that little ad from Out yep. um, well, here we are again, second time in one expo. That's like that's a record so far. I'm a pretty big deal. I don't know if you knew that about me or not. Pretty much. Pretty <laughs> yep. much. Um, so we released. Uh, well, I guess at this point it will be released. We record a podcast earlier, and 
Uh, you are now working. Oh, for those that don't know, this is once again Corey Mr. Beckendorf. Corey Beckendorf, not Breckendorf. Not Breckendorf. Beckendorf. Becker, man. Uh, <laughs> Corey with an E, Beckendorf, not Breckendorf. You're on it. That might I might have to put that whole uh, that whole uh, name named slug in the uh, on the do. podcast. I'd cover. really appreciate that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you're you're working this new gig with Crispy and. About uh, two years ago, I sat down with Scott DeYoung of Crispy, and we went through the lineup, talked about selecting a boot um, and really kind of what makes Crispy unique. And, it, you know, things have uh, changed, got some new products out, um, some new updates since then. And so um, would love to just kind of, one, uh, go through a little bit about you personally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because we didn't get to do that on uh, the podcast with Dustin. So just maybe a little bit of background about yourself, how you got into hunting first. Sure. Yeah, so I, uh, I grew up just outside of Des Moines, Iowa, um, doing a ton of whitetail hunting, doing a lot of pheasant hunting as well. We grew up with the short hair. Um, I had a job opportunity come up as I was getting out of college. I moved to Salt Lake City here when I turned 21 years old. It was the week after, I think, that I turned 21. (laughs) Um, Ended up bumping into Dustin Whitwer um, at Shields there. He was working um, as it opened. They hired him as an archery manager and got to know him, got to know his brother. We uh, got to doing a lot of hunting together. Um, I feel very fortunate that you know I bumped into those boys and (laughs) there's there's a pretty steep learning curve when it comes to a lot of the gear out here and honestly Dustin handed me Cam Haynes's book the year I moved out and I didn't really when when you grow up in Iowa you're you're only hunting private land there's like one percent of that state that is public really you just yeah it's I knew there wasn't quite as much as maybe out west but I thought there was still like quite a bit of public land out in Iowa no man I and I I could be off on those numbers I'm sure it's under three percent but it's all farm ground you know it's some of the best farm ground in the country and so I was fortunate enough my you know my family had you know cropland and we just we didn't do food plots my grandpa yeah he would have freaked out if we tried to put a food (laughs) plot in because it's all cornfields but we were fortunate to have decent land to hunt, and we shot some good bucks, had awesome pheasant hunting as I was growing up. Um, but it, it it didn't really – it was never a perspective that I had while I was growing up. And I moved out west, and one of the things I wanted to do was hunt elk. Um, but it wasn't – it didn't turn into a reality until I met Dustin, read Cam Haynes' book, and it, like, all clicked over. It's like, oh, we can just go <laughs> hunt out here. Like, you don't have to – Yeah. you don't have to know somebody. You don't have to pay somebody. You don't have to – you can just go hunt it. And so um, didn't know what a jet boil was. Didn't, <laughs> never had a mountain house. The My very first trip, uh, I think he gave me, like, a photocopy of David Long's book and his pack list, and one of the things on there was duct tape. So – I brought a roll of duct tape in, you know, and we're like eight miles deep on this first hunt. And he's like, hey, you got any duct tape? We were doing something to a tent, I think. And I whipped out a roll of duct tape, and he kind of looked at me like, you moron. (laughs) 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 So, no, it's been been a fun ride, and we've – I've since learned a little bit. I've kind of always been a gear junkie in anything I do, and it – you know, I've learned a little bit and got to go on some really cool hunts with those boys, so – there you go. And, well, being a gear junkie uh, has probably translated well now into the new gig with Crispy. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, talking about Crispy, um, just for those who haven't listened to the prior episode I did with Scott, maybe you just go through, uh, talk about Crispy a little bit as a company, um, what you guys do, and some of the, I don't know, a little bit of the history behind it. Absolutely. So Crispy is a company um, it's handmade Italian boots, and it's actually still a family-owned third-generation company. Um, they started building boots in 1975. Um, they're actually pretty well known in the Telemark world. Um, they do some of the Nordic ski and Telemark stuff. Um, we don't bring any of that into the country. There is a distributor for that stuff, fortunately, because none of us know anything about <laughs> Telemark skis. Um, but we do get that email every now and then. But it's a third-generation, still privately-owned company in Italy. They, um, they've been building great hunting and hiking boots since the seventies, um, over in a, you know, small little village in Italy and they, we bring them into the country and market it towards hunters. You Mm -hmm. know, they, they make great outdoor boots. It's a industry we'd love to get in. 
most of our products are kind of you know geared more towards a hunter they're built a little heavier duty um and they uh yeah they they build great boots we've uh the current ownership's been bringing them into the country for the last three years and so we uh we've we've seen they've they've done a phenomenal job i've been with the company for about six months now they've done a phenomenal job of latching you know bringing in the right products marketing it the right way treating customers and dealers the way you know companies should be treated and the um you know previous to that there was people bringing them into the country i actually bought my first pair of crispies about six years ago oh wow yeah and i you know i can still and dustin had vouched for me here but like he bought a pair a, a competitor's brand and i i bought my crispies and we argued back and forth i'd owned a couple other pairs of nice boots we argued back and forth about it, and he'll he'll vouch for me. I I've been a crispy proponent for the last six years. Um, <laughs> bought my first pair of Wilds, which is you know we've changed since, but um, loved them. Owned four or five pairs of crispies before I even started with the company, and before the current ownership was even bringing them into the country. Mm-hmm. So I've uh, I love the product. They fit my feet awesome. Um, I couldn't ask for a better boot. So I'm I feel very fortunate to be kind of on the team you know it's like yeah. you know it'd be like jumping on on the patriots right now it's like oh sweet belichick and brady are here i'm coming in <laughs> <laughs> so well hopefully somebody else got that uh reference because i do not watch football. no football for you <laughs> i i, I you've heard of the patriots uh, yes i, I get tom brady I'm, yeah. I'm just massive but uh, um no, no so it's 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 been fun it's been a great gig um I mean, you're preaching to the choir for sure on the Krispies. I mean, you know, as as you know, I I got a, I got a couple of pairs. We talked a lot about this, and uh, you know, I love my hunters. I, I went in and I you know I looked at you guys lineup, and I had somebody recommend Krispies to me, and I'm like, all right, you know, I'll give them a try. And I I remember I was trying to just figure out, if nothing else, I was just trying to figure out what I should buy and this and that, and like how to correctly measure. And because you know you're ordering online, sometimes yeah. there, there's a little bit of a nervous. nervous it's tough, absolutely. There. You know, I I hadn't come to any of these expos yet. I hadn't been able to really try them on, and so you know, the customer service was great picking out these first boots. And I I was like, you know, what's your what's your uh, boot that's going to get me through the worst of the worst here? Right. And I'm like, because I can survive like a little bit heavier of a boot. I can survive. Uh, a thicker, more insulated boot in the summer if it means I don't have to buy two pairs of boots. Right, right. <laughs> yep. And uh, so I picked up a pair of the Hunters. I mean, the the freaking uh, Sherman tank uh, Yeah, the Crim Daily boot. Crim. Yeah, you just went and picked out the most expensive boot on the wall. Is what you <laughs> yeah, did. Pretty much. Um, but you know what? They they have gotten me through quite a bit. And like I said, yeah, they're, you know what? For summer in uh, Arizona, probably a little bit more boot than I need. Although... They work also double great as a snake boot. Sure. Because uh, they are thick and they are tall. But anyway, uh, I digress. <laughs> um, so, I've, you know, I picked those up. Uh, then, you know, a uh, few months to a year later, picked up, uh, picked up a pair of the Laponia. Yep. A super nice lightweight hiker because I was doing a lot of hikes around L.A. Started using them for those short hikes. So I wasn't sure. carrying the heavy boots. And... Stop taking them off after the hikes. Right, right. Um, yeah, they're still on your feet right now. I was going to say, and then, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, a year and a half later, um, I've worn them on hunts. I've, they're a daily wear boot, regardless of how many blood stains I have on them. Sure. And these are the, one of the most comfortable boots I've ever worn. Um, so, huge fan of Krispies, as you know. Um, but going through, what makes, uh, what makes a, a crispy boot different or unique maybe from... You know, we're here at Hunt Expo. You can yeah. walk through and see Probably six or ten. seven different yeah, boot brands, absolutely. and just looking at them, you can't always tell the difference. Yeah. So right off the bat, we're you know we're a handmade Italian boot, um, and so we definitely do fall more into that like premium category of boots, which there's still you know four or five premium boots here, and I've owned you know three or four of them. Um, right away, we're using Gore-Tex, which you know everybody's heard of. It's a it's the best waterproof membrane on the market. Um, there's a lot of competitors out there. There's a lot of good competitors out there. Um, but Gore-Tex has been around the longest. You know, if you start talking to guys who are climbing Everest, and if, if you can make a list of all those guys, <laughs> I, I'm willing to bet that 90-plus percent of them have Gore-Tex on. And it's, it's good for a reason. It's very breathable. It's very durable. It's very waterproof. 
Um, it's not perfect because nothing is. Um, but it's, it's the best product we can put in that boot for a waterproof membrane. Um, and it's in all the boots we bring into the country. Um, we're using Vibram Soles, um, best outsole on the market. Um, they're using the best components they can to get that. It's a, it's a really tough balance of getting good grip and getting good durability. Mm-hmm. If you use the right type of material, you can raise both of those things. But we could make a more durable sole, or Vibram could, but it would be less grippy. And so we, yeah. we, we found that kind of perfect harmony between those two things. Vibram makes the best outsole on the market. Um, and then, you know, we, Crispy Italy owns their factory. We're not, you know, there's, in a lot of other boot companies, they're, you're paying middlemen. So either, you know, they're either going to have to mark that boot up because somebody else has got to make a dime on it, or they're going to have to dumb down their product to be at the same price point. And mm-hmm. so, um, you know, we're the U.S. distribution um, of a private company that is, you know, building boots over in Italy. So, and it's, it's third generation when we call over there, when my, when the owner Mark calls up, they, you know, he talks to, he talks to the dad, you know, he talks yeah. to the guy who started it all, which is pretty cool. Um, and it, you know, it's very, you know, you can tell that work ethic and the type, wh- what they do over in Europe is very different than in the United States. It's pretty cool to see like how that whole family, you know, jumps in and works really hard and mm-hmm. brings us an awesome product. So absolutely. Uh, so you're talking about the Vibram sole. You do have a few models that aren't the Vibram sole, nope, correct? No, every, everything in the United States is uh, Vibram sole right now. Really? Okay. Okay. Yep. For some, I don't know why I thought there was a, a couple of models that, that had a different uh, sole. You know, we've, we've looked at, um, you know, because we can reduce the cost so much um, if we don't put that Vibram on there. But we've, we've looked at some models at not bringing them. But even, like, I've got a pair of Monaco's on, which is kind of our light hiker, you okay. know urban sole um that is a vibram sole as well okay um we just don't label it that way um so you know we we are running vibram all of our boots are resolable that was when sam bumped into me at the crispy <laughs> booth the first thing he asked he's like hey can you resole these laponias it's like yeah we can but the, <laughs> those things are small well, your answer throwing. was like oh yeah sure what do you and you look you look yeah. down and you're like are you kidding me yeah. You don't want to resell those. <laughs> all that would be left is to sole. What have you done to that boot? <laughs> right. No, so all of our boots are resellable. Um, our leather boots are usually the best candidates for a resole yeah. because the uppers hold up better. But um, we're sourcing leather from, you know, the best place we can. And I say we, that's crispy Italy when, they're, when yeah. they're building the boots. We're getting awesome chunks of leather. If you come feel our leather and set it next to a competitor's, you can – you can tell, you can feel. It's like mm-hmm. picking up a Swarovski rifle scope or Swarovski pair of binos. <laughs> like, there is just something different about them. So we, uh, you know, we're yeah, we like them quite a bit. So, so you know, Sam here at the expo. See this crispy boot. Yep. All right, boy. I need me a pair of hunting boots. What y'all got right here? So. One of the one of the things that also sets us apart is we have quite a bit of diversity in the lineup, and it, you know Sam's seen that because he's he's brought two polar opposites. Exactly. Boots. You know when we look at the spectrum, you look at you know Ford as a as a company. He bought an F three fifty diesel, and then also bought you know a little I don't a know Focus. What, yeah, a Ford Focus <laughs> as well. So. Um, we, we make a ton of diversity and that, that is one thing that sets us apart. I've got a pair of, you know, we call them lifestyle shoes. Italy makes a ton of them. We just don't bring them in that many yeah. into the country. But so we get that question on the phone and at these shows all day long of, you know, which one of these I've got 25 boots up on the wall, which one of these is right for me? Um, and it, it's a very tough question to answer. The truth of the matter is there's probably several of them. Um, it just depends on what hunt you're doing, mm-hmm. what environment you're in, um, what you're used to, what you like. Um, you know, all those things are going to factor in. And well, so know, say I came up to you and said that it, at the booth here. What yep. what would be the what would you take me through right now to, so, to pick out the right boot for so me? So first things first, I'm going to qualify you. It's like what states are you hunting in? Um, what seasons are you hunting? Um, and honestly, what boot are you in now? And, mm-hmm. what, you know, what do you like and what do you not like about that boot? And so, um, you know, pretty common. We're here in Utah right now. We get a lot of Wyoming, Idaho, Utah hunters. 
um, which is honestly kind of tough because you're kind of right in the middle. It's like <laughs> I hunt in southern Utah, and, you know, that's more like Nevada than it is yeah. in Utah where, you know, you get up to northern, you know, the guy says Idaho, and he's up in Caldwell. That's a whole different game up there. So um, I – I personally, and I, I need to get better about it, I have a bias towards leather boots. I absolutely, I think our leather boots are the best product we make. And I uh, <laughs> I really enjoy them. They, there's just something about sliding a leather boot on. And you've probably experienced it with your hunter when you, you know, even if you haven't had it on for a few months and you go out for a hunt and you slide it in there and it's like, you know, that suppleness of the leather, the durability of the leather, um, there's just something about that, and yeah. I'm, I'm I'm very biased. So when guys come up to me, like for some reason, I always try to pigeonhole them into a leather boot. It's like, yeah. no, I just said it three times. I'm hunting coos deer in Mexico. I don't want a leather boot. It's like, well, you could, you know. We make uninsulated leather boots, but that's typically the first thing I try to get it out of a customer is whether we're putting them in a leather or a synthetic boot. Mm-hmm. Um, synthetic is going to breathe better. It's going to be lighter weight, um, but it's not going to be as durable. All of our synthetic materials are also going to be a little more static. And so Cordura it doesn't have any stretch or give to it. And so it doesn't form to your foot the way leather will. Leather is going to be less durable. Leather is going to not breathe. Even our uninsulated boots are not going to breathe as well as a synthetic boot. Um, you know, we think about, you know, like Under Armour, they're using a poly. When water hits that, it's supposed to spread out. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens when we use a Cordura, when we use a suede or a nylon is moisture hits that, it spreads out and it goes away. And that's, that's not something that leather does super well. Now, it's still Gore-Tex. It still breathes pretty well. Sounds like you've been running around in a pair of our leather boots in Arizona. Oh, yeah. Um, your feet well, probably get hot think- in that, right? A little bit. I mean, compared, I really don't notice it all that much. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, the one thing I've noticed is uh, they keep me warm as hell sure. during the late season, yep. going through snow, whatever. I mean, I've walked through I walked through an icy river that, uh, you know, in those things, and my feet were fine. Um, and, but during the summer, like, I, I just don't notice it. Yeah. Like, and so, yeah, they, they may be a little hotter, and I, I don't know, maybe that's just me, but... The insulation does great in the cold weather, but it, I mean, the leather and stuff, maybe it doesn't breathe as, it definitely doesn't breathe as much as this. I do know my right. Laponia, um, but I don't notice, like, it's not to an uncomfortable extent, like, and those are like the fully thick, insulated, you right, know, Right, right, yeah, that's the, waterproof. that's the F-350. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I try to get that out of a consumer, and weight, you know, weight's always something that's really important to a guy, and that's one of the downfalls of leather is it's always going to be heavier. I can build yeah. a lighter boot out of Cordura, um, but it's but it's just not going to be as durable. Yeah. And so, so let's go through this. Let's then say, um, you know, he says, you know, I'm going to be chasing. I'm going to be up in Wyoming in August. I want to chase. I'm going to be chasing some antelope. Yep. So somebody somebody comes up to you and says that. Uh, what's what's in our next uh what are we going through um next thing i ask is you know his style of hunting and how much support he wants Mm -hmm. um and you know it's nice it shows because i can kind of look at a guy uh you know i look at sam and i'm like i bet he's about 180 190 pounds my you know oh you're complimenting me thank you um i look be i look beefier than i am i (laughs) i can i can typically look at a guy and you know and it, that helps because one of the things we look at is our midsoles. And so in an antelope hunt, a lot of guys, A, want to be pretty quiet. Um, I want to right away know whether they're doing rifle or archery because it, mm-hmm. it's got two different demands there. Um, and then I want to ask how much support they want because you're once, – once again, going back to this sliding scale, you have – I can add support into a boot like your hunter, um, but what you're going to give up is mobility. And mm-hmm. so in like a Laponia or a Thor boot, where when we give up that uh, support, we can be a little more agile. Um, you know, going on that hunt with South Coxie, you actually, and I know a ton of good mule deer hunters who love that Laponia, you're, you know, you can be a lot more nimble. You can be a lot more quiet. South mm-hmm. does an amazing job of 
staying quiet 100% of the time. And it's because he's got a lightweight boot. He can control his football. He can feel there's there's a word for it, and I, it starts with P. I never know what it is. But there's something to being able to feel the ground underneath you. When you're trying mm-hmm. to be quiet walking through a scree field, if it's like pro preception, I I, I'm sure I'm butchering that. But if you can feel that ground underneath you, there's something to being able to balance a little better. There's something mm-hmm. to being able to be a little more quiet. And South has mastered that art. And I've never been around. I've been on mule deer, and it's almost exhausting when you get down to your socks and you got to yeah. close that last 100 yards on a stock. Um, it's almost exhausting trying to be super quiet. Um, and and being able to do that efficiently is tough and our lighter weight boots do that but you shoot an antelope and now you got to pack it Mm -hmm. you know which you know not everybody's packing antelope a lot of guys can drive an atv so that's you know that's an important part of the equation but so say we're not we're not looking to necessarily pack heavy yep you know i want to be quiet and mobile i'm bow i'm bow hunting antelope so i want to be able to get in i'm going to be doing not a lot of heavy hiking, but a lot of like crawling through. So I'm gonna be right. want to be quiet. I don't I don't necessarily need the support. Um, so we've kind of we've kind of gotten through there. You know, it's earlier season, yep. so I want to I want a synthetic. I want it I want yep. it to breathe. Absolutely. I you know all of that. Um, what what are what are my options? What are what are you asking next? What are my yeah. options in the line? So so right away that Laponia is a stellar candidate and probably the boot that I'm gonna put most guys in. Mm-hmm. Um, the Thor boot as well um, has been super popular for us. The Thor's gonna offer a little bit stiffer platform, but you still get the mobility out of your ankles. Um, and it's it's one of our lightest boots. It's super breathable. Um, Really, really like that boot. And I, I think the sleeper in that equation is our Valderez. And for a guy, and everybody's body is different, but for a guy who has, doesn't have naturally sweaty feet, our Valderez is an all, it's a leather boot with a nylon tongue. Okay. And so you're getting that, breathe, or you're getting that you know, durability out of the outside. It's going to handle that in, abrasive environment a little better. Um, but then that nylon tongue allows it to breathe. Okay. And so I and we we run a little bit thinner um, leather on that boot, um, and you'll see right away on the side it's got an X, and that's actually to help support that leather because we are running a thinner leather to make it more breathable. That boot's going to be waterproof longer. Um, we also run a polyurethane midsole on that boot. Um, if you look at Sam's right now, his midsole's compressed over time, and that's why I want to look at him and say. Okay, Sam's 170 or 180 pounds. A bigger guy's going to compress EVA quicker. EVA is what we see in tennis shoes, and once you've got three or four months on a tennis shoe, if you're running a lot, you can feel that, and it doesn't, you know, it's not as okay. soft anymore. Um, those Laponias are probably there. If you were 220 pounds, those things would be another like quarter yeah. inch shorter. They would have been there a year ago. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so. We, uh, you know, that Valder as especially for a bigger guy, it offers a little more support. It's one of our most breathable leather boots, mm-hmm. but it's super durable. And so. So what would maybe the difference then be? Like, I understand, like, the idea of, like, a, like stiffer ankle support. Yeah. What's the, what's the benefit or downside to, a, uh, like, a stiffer sole? Like, what's the yeah. benefit to that? Why would you want a stiffer sole over so, a... So our Laponia that he's got on is a two flex, um, where the Thor is a four flex. And I would say that's what, you know, would be the bigger difference or what you want to choose between um, for what's right for you. And that that four flex is going to offer a more stable platform to stand on. And so as we're side hilling Mm -hmm. um, and as we're stepping on uneven terrain, it's going to... Um, not beat your feet up as much. Um, you know, everybody's ran around in like a Solomon uh, speed cross, something like that. As you step on rocks and uneven terrain, it's going to fatigue your feet. Um, and so if we put that four, that four flex on there, stiffness wise, it's going to offer a more stable platform and it's also not going to make your feet flex in a weird way. Mm-hmm. Um, but you lose a little bit of that nimbleness that you're going to find in a Laponia with a two flex. So yeah. it's kind of a give take there. Um, and as we add more weight, whether it's on your body or in your pack, uh, it's going to fatigue your feet even more. Yeah. So um, that's kind of the difference between the two and kind of what you want to decide between. Okay. So, say then I've got a, a mid-late September mule deer hunt out in Idaho, some 
yeah. thick timber, higher mountain, a lot Absolutely. of water. Um, yeah, you know, late August, early September. Um, that's really where, you know, stuff becomes a gray area. And it, it goes into what guys like because a leather boot for me is i'm going once i get to that climate i'm going to a leather boot every mm-hmm. time even august in nevada i'll hit you know temps as low as 20 yeah um but we'll also see you know it's pretty easy to see an 80 degree swing in, in, yeah. in that time of year where it might be 15 or 20 degrees one morning and then 80 degrees that same day <laughs> or 90 degrees so um you know idaho wyoming high country mule deer i'm typically really trying to get guys into a leather boot um we still it's probably 50 50 we still see a ton of guys in a synthetic boot Mm -hmm. our summit's super popular it's kind of that good all around um you know it's a synthetic upper eva midsole um it's actually been one of our best selling boots um i i typically once you hit that point i'm trying to get a guy into a nevada yeah. So, and you tried a pair of Nevadas on yesterday, didn't you? Uh, I've not tried them on because okay. I have I have the hunters, you got the hunter. and I, yeah. I, you know how they fit. I'm like I generally know how they fit, but just, yeah. So say I'm I'm I come to you and I'm like, okay, I got this mule deer hunt. I'm packing, I'm packing four miles in. So I'm, yeah. so I'm I'm not gonna be at the car. I'm planning on hiking a lot every day. So I may, I may have to be carrying out some some yeah. decent weight and packing yeah. out this mule deer. Uh, it's September, so you know I want something that'll handle the rain, but is not too right, too uh, overdone. I don't, yep. I don't want the F one fifty. Right. What uh, you, you're saying, probably yeah. the Nevada. The, the Nevada there, you know, it's gonna. When you look at our boot lineup, when we put our ankle bone support system in it, is really when you start getting good support. Not everybody needs that support. I certainly like it if I'm gonna throw sixty or eighty pounds of mule deer on my back. Um, and so the Nevada is an all leather construction. It's kind of our flagship product. Mm -hmm. Um, it's an eight inch boot. It's basically a hunter with four inches chopped off the top. Um, and it's a boot that's been around forever. Dustin Whitwer, that's kind of his, that's his favorite boot. Yeah. Uh, Who likes that guy? Anyways, whatever. Forget, forget that. Yeah. So that, that Nevada is a great, you know, it's a three flex, so it's not too stiff, not too, um, not too soft offers enough support and just still a breathable quick note we've been talking about like the two flex the three flex the three four. flex four flex what's what's the range one to five one to five five is you know and in the, the way we that's one thing i probably should have you know when we were talking about what sets us apart um the way we add that stiffness is not a shank and we get that a ton because a lot of companies use a shank we use what's called a board last and so if we imagine pulling an insole out of your boot Think of using that shape on top of our midsole to create that stiffness. Mm -hmm. And so we can use a couple different synthetic materials to do that. But what that allows us to do is it allows us to put some flex in there at your toe box and allows your foot to bend the way it's supposed to bend. Uh, You know, if you jump up and land, you're going to land on your toes and the balls of your feet. If you put a super stiff shank in there and it's just two pieces of rebar, A, you're going to feel that over time. Mm -hmm. And B, um, you know, you're not supporting your entire platform. We get to add that left to right rigidity for side hilling. You know, if you try to twist our boots, there's, it's pretty tough to do, but we can put that flex in there to allow your foot to Mm -hmm. flex where it needs to. And I think that's a really important thing that sets us apart. We're not just trying to put two by fours under your feet yeah. and make you deal with it. We're, we're allowing that foot to flex where it wants to. And so every day walking around, your foot's used to it. So it's not going to fatigue all that much. Um, now, we can, we can make that as stiff as we want. We build a boot called the S, Brickstall SF. And, you know, that's, we call it the Aaron Snyder boot. Yeah. And, it's, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a five on the scale. Um, and it's, it's something you that, could use it as a cutting board in your, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, it's, it's still not as stiff as some mountaineering boots. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, you know, when you, when you hop in that thing, it's, it's very, very stiff. So, um, a three flex is kind of, you know, a, it's right in the middle between one and five. Um, but it's kind of our go-to for most people until they start saying, you know, Hey, I like a stiff boot or I'm using a mountaineering boot or I, mm-hmm. I want the cramp on. Um, capability, and then and then we're going to go to a stiffer boot. But I like the three year hunters a four. Um, it's probably fifteen or twenty percent stiffer than a Nevada boot is. Okay. Um, and as you also have to remember, depending on how much you weigh, 
that's important because a, a bigger guy is going to make that four flex flex more than a smaller guy. Yeah. yeah. And so Sal Cox being 140 pounds, that really gives him an advantage when he's using a two flex. It's like me running a three flex at yeah. 200 pounds. So it, there's a little bit of give take there. I really like the three flex for most people getting into our boot. That Nevada too is one of those that like you slide on and you know it's an easy sell. All I got to do is get a guy to put his foot in it, and he's like, all right here's my money mm-hmm. you know so i that nevada boot for all around it's it's probably i hate saying like and you know you're proposing and I, I like the way you're doing it like each hunt what's the best um i wish my job was that simple oh yeah because yeah. most guys are like i'm gonna be in hawaii during the summer and then i'm also going to hunt doll sheep in the chugach range yeah and <laughs> i only want one boot it's like well it's two like completely different it's like i want to tell <laughs> They're, they're yeah. taking to heart the buy tags, not yeah. gear uh, adage. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, you know, most most guys aren't that extreme, but we do yeah. get a lot of, um, you know, hey, I, I do a lot of early season July scouting, but I also want, like, mm-hmm. late season high country rifle. And it's like, that's you're going to make sacrifices in places. And, yeah. And I think that Nevada is, we make it in an insulated and non-insulated um, that Nevada is a really happy medium as like a do all boot. So mm-hmm. it, uh, but I, I think it's wheelhouse is kind of that, especially in yeah. non insulated September high country elk mule deer. Um, you know, it's super durable. It's a boot that you're going to have unless you're, you know, hunting 365 days a year, <laughs> which we all wish we could, but reality is most guys aren't. It's yeah. a boot that's going to last a long time because of its all leather construction. So. And I mean, and like like you said, that's an important point. Is you're gonna have to if you're just looking to buy a boot, your first maybe your first hunting boot, maybe yeah. you know you're like me and you, you're just like I, I'm I'm struggling to kind of this is a higher end boot. It, it yeah. can cost more than yeah. than like you, you know going on Amazon and buying a pair of red uh, redhead or red whatever. Wing. Yeah, I, red wings. Yep. What a there's yeah. redheads. Uh, the too. Irish yeah. setter, the Irish setter, red wings, whatever. Yeah. I was trying. Those were my my first sure. pair. Like I was like, I need a camo boot. Because right. that's what you have to buy for hunting. It's got to be like, camouflage. Of course. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I bought those. And uh, I put those on, actually, not too long ago. And I was like, oh, this is horrible. Yeah, this is different. <laughs> it's, you, you guys have ruined me. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, say you're, like, looking to step it up for the first time. You're like, okay, I can afford the one pair of boot. It's important you realize you have to decide where you're going to make your sacrifices. Absolutely. For me, it was the the weight and thinking about like, okay, you know, I may get a little hot. My feet may sweat a little bit yep. more. Uh, and th- that was my decision for someone else. They may be like, no way in hell. I can handle my feet being cold and wet. I can deal with that all day long. Right. But you know, if I have to be lifting this heavy ass boot and you know, yep. and I get, I get sweat of feet. Right. Not right. going to happen. So, you know, and I that'll point you in it. Have you point you? Have you point them in a different direction? And that's what I always try to ask guys: is you know what's most important to you? You have this huge scale that we can put you in, and you you want to do all these different hunts. It's like, well, which hunt's most important, or what? You know, I've got mm-hmm. weak ankles, so it's like I need a boot with support. So I'm going to sacrifice that lighter yeah. early season. So and I, you know, some guys just need two boots, and I, you know, it's unfortunate and it's a tough pill to swallow because. Our boots aren't cheap, no. you know, <laughs> so, and that's, you know, that's something we're aware of. I think that Nevada is a great all around boot and you, you got to ask yourself, you know, do I get sweaty feet? I've got guys who are hunting, buying a non-insulated boot, knowing they're late season hunting because they're very, very high activity and mm. their feet are sweaty. So staying dry is number one. And it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, rain or wet grass or sweat wet feet or wet feet and yeah. so a guy you know bombing in with sweaty feet can do better than a non-insulated leather boot even in you know extreme cold temps so it, it's a balance unfortunately it's kind of a, it can be an expensive trial and error yeah. process um well man fit me for my uh late season rifle elk, elk tag uh you, you already got a pair of hunters <laughs> yeah <laughs> no and i i knew that answer was coming yeah you know i actually like our guide boot so our our flagship line or flagship product is the nevada guide hunter and mm. it's an eight inch 10 inch 12 inch and i find myself in my guide boot more often than anything else mm-hmm. we make that boot in an insulated and non-insulated 
um, which we can kind of bomb into our insulation technology um, once we get there. But it uh, that that guide boot is my favorite boot. It's a 10 inch all leather construction. Um, I bought the 200 gram insulation, and that's that's what I'm wearing in September. I like the 10 inch for the extra support. Mm-hmm. Um, it obviously gives you a little higher. You know that brings the Gore Tex higher up your yeah. calf. Um, but that's that's my favorite boot. We do sell some hunters. The hunter, which you know is the boot you have, it's about 15 or 20 percent stiffer than the guide, which you know is kind of user dependent. Um, and then it's two more inches of leather. Yep. So it, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a burly boot. We send a lot of those up to British Columbia and Alaska. Yeah, I can see that. Um, yeah, and it's it's a tough. It's the well, F350. The nice thing about those boots too is. Uh, Except for Rarik, you really don't have to wear gaiters with those boots. Right, absolutely. Um, and I, I even, uh, I was going to change out some trail cams, uh, and it was just after a heavy rain, and I'd forgotten that the, uh, the creek I have to cross, like, right. it's one of those creeks that, like, it may be a trickle at the beginning of winter. It's, like, dead dry during the summer, maybe a trickle at the beginning of winter. It will be nine feet deep. Really? When it rains heavy. Like, <laughs> it's insane, the yeah. the distance. And um, and so I go across, and it was, I'm like, oh, crap. The water's, like, knee-deep right now. And I actually, you know, I, I cinch them down pretty tight at the top. Yeah. And the, a little bit of water got into those things, but they're tall enough. And with how I cinched them down at the top, they kind of sealed around my, uh, uh, my leg. And I walked out of there. I'm like... There's like three drips of water in this boot right now, and it was completely submerged. And I mean, I know yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. like your advertising platform right. or anything. It's like yep. <laughs> we don't guarantee that kind of right. <laughs> no, certainly, yeah. <laughs> but don't do that. No, I was yeah. I was blown away. I was really surprised by that. And uh, no, that's awesome. And that you know, gators. I feel like I've I've learned you know through this job over the last six mm-hmm. months that. Gators are a pretty underutilized piece of gear. A oh, lot yeah. of guys are not using gators. And, I, you know, the phone call we get most often for somebody who thinks our boots are leaking, it's it's never walking through a stream. Because guys understand, like, as you walk through water, like, you got to kind of hustle. And, like, yeah. um, you know, if the boot, if the water goes over your boot, you know, except if you're Sam and you have this, we <laughs> need, yeah, we need you, to you know my be- my beefy yeah. calves. Uh, <laughs> you know, if, you, if water goes over your boot, people understand it's going to dump in. Um, but what what a lot of people don't realize is a performance sock is moisture wicking. It's going to wick water into your boot just like it's going to wick it out. And yeah. most of most of the phone calls we get are, I wasn't even in water. I was walking through wet grass. And what happens is is your pants get soaked. Yeah, hits hits your sock. Socks don't know which direction to wick. They just wick water, and so it'll drag it right down to the bottom of your boot, and you'll be dumping your boot out. Mm-hmm. And if you have a gator on, you can prevent that. Yeah. I bring gators almost everywhere. You know, like an antelope hunt in Nevada, I might not, but I bring gators almost everywhere because if you do, you know, it stops raining. You know, rain gear is really only great in the rain. Yep. I can get away without wearing rain pants and just wearing that gator over my boot, especially more and more guys are buying a shorter boot, a lighter boot. Um, if you've got an eight inch boot and you're walking around in wet grass and your socks hit you mid calf, you're going to have wet feet. And yeah. that's, that's just the name of the game. So gators are definitely underutilized uh, in the hunting world. I tell guys almost every day, it's like, you need to go buy yourself yeah. a set of gators. Um, not that none of our boots leak ever, but that is a really common it's like, yeah, you just your pants and socks got <laughs> wet, and your socks drug it down in. So, it, uh, you know, that's important. Crossing streams, they do help, but walking through wet grass is really where gators shine. Yeah. So, um, so we kind of gone through the general gamut. Yep. What, uh, what other uh, maybe interesting or or other pieces of the lineup have we missed that that people might be interested in yeah let's uh let's dive into insulation because that seems to be something i get asked a lot about okay um we use in most of our boots so nevada guide hunter we offer all in the same insulation level um level and it's called gore-tex duratherm it's gore-tex's product um all of our boots have a full gore-tex booty which looks you know similar to like a plastic sock Mm -hmm. um on our insulated boots with that Duratherm, we apply 
um, or I say we, Gore-Tex applies that duratherm to that booty. So it's going to insulate very evenly, even underneath your foot, um, rather than just stuffing Thinsulate. And we, we use Thinsulate, we, we call it a 200 gram equivalent because everybody's, you know, familiar <laughs> with it. Um, but our, our boots insulate much more evenly because there's insulation mm-hmm. all over the place as well as it doesn't add any bulk i get that question all the time is do i need to size up for your insulated boots yeah it's only a little thicker than a dryer sheet that gore-tex duratherm and our, the r value is much higher it's a hollow fiber insulation um, so it can't absorb water it's still going to insulate when it's compressed um, it's a it's a really good insulation and i don't feel like we put it on the pedestal that it deserves um, because it's an expensive way to build an insulated yeah. boot, um, and it's the best way to build an insulated boot, but it, um, you know, we just don't talk about it very much. And so in, because Gore-Tex adheres that insulation, it works really well with Gore-Tex and the breathability aspect of it. And mm-hmm. so um, that's where you're running around with a Hunter, which is a 12-inch all-leather boot around in Arizona. That boot's still going to breathe really well as an insulated boot, we stay dry, we stay, you know, cooler when it's warm, warmer when it's cool, which is super important. Um, the other boot we make, uh, you know, I just told you my favorite boots, the guide boot, our Wild Rock is our heaviest insulated boot. Okay. And we, you know, my boss and I and uh, a couple guys there, we've been talking about how to maybe um, educate our customers better on this boot. It is 400 grams of Primaloft. So I go from Duratherm and I tell you it's a 200 gram equivalent, and then I tell you 400 grams of Primaloft. Well, Primaloft, once again, is hollow fiber, can't absorb water. It's mm. one of the best synthetic insulations out there, and it's going to insulate when compressed. But the R factor is much higher than a Thinsulate, and where we put it in the boot um, is got a lot better structure to it. And mm-hmm. so. Um, that boot equivalency is more like a six or 700 gram. And so a guy up in British Columbia, a guy in Montana, North Dakota, they see 400 grams. They say that's not enough. Well, it's 400 grams of Prima loft. Yeah. And so it's a, it is a very warm boot. I run around, you know, in November in that boot on the Wasatch here. It, uh, and it does really well. Now we cannot build a boot and I, I don't know of anybody who can, if you can, I'll buy some, um, so we can copy it but (laughs) we uh you know if you go from a high you know the wasatch is a good proving ground for us because we're you know we're day hunting in it we're hiking in at three or four a.m going from really high activity because it's steep Mm -hmm. and then we sit down in glass and so if i built a boot that was warm enough to sit down in zero degree weather in glass or sit in a tree stand you would sweat your feet off Mm -hmm. on the way up um, and that's why we use layering system on your jacket. You use layering system on your pants. Everywhere else we use layering systems. With a boot, I do the same thing. Um, and I, we've got, uh, or I, I pack something called a booty. It's, an, it's a down insulated booty. I hike hmm. to the top. I, I still choose the right boot for the hunt. You know, if I'm on an elk hunt, I'm stopping and going, stopping and going. If I'm glassing, I'm probably going to get up and move around a little bit. But if I'm going to sit somewhere on a ridge for an hour and glass or wait for the sun to come up, I'm going to slap that down booty on at the same time I put my down coat on. And so... So that goes over... I'm just... I'm fascinated. Yeah. I've never heard of one of these. Like, so it yeah. goes over the boot. Yeah. And it's, it's, is it's, it like a rubber bottom? Like, what's yeah, the... Yeah, it's, it's kind of more of like a nylon bottom. Um, there's, it's pretty common in the mountaineering world. It's not something you're going to like wander around in. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you could walk like behind a tree and take a leak or something, but, um, you know, it's, you know, think of like a sleeping bag, but it's a little more durable across the bottom. Um, and you just pull them over your boots and it's down. And so it's the same concept as throwing a jacket on. Um, and so I, I still try to pick the right amount of insulation. I'm not adding a bunch of socks. Socks don't make great insulation. Yeah. Um, you know, there, our boots are technical boots. If you, oh, you know, size up by half or a full size and then slap three pairs of warm socks <laughs> on, you're going to have a ton of slop in your boots. Yeah. And so I, I really like the Farm Defeat Damascus. Um, I've been wearing Smartwool PhDs for the last six or eight years. Love that boot or love that sock. I have you, a tendency to buy whatever merino wool socks are for sale on Camo Fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, That's, okay, this one's yeah. a lightweight one. I'll, I, I've got two. Yeah. Ma- I've got plenty of lightweight ones. Ooh, heavy ones are on sale. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what and, brand is this? <laughs> yep. And I, I like a, 
you know, I'm I'm the guy like three pairs of socks will get me through the hunting season. So yeah. if they're twenty dollar socks, it's sixty bucks. It seems kind of silly, but having a performance sock is important. And I I think having dude, I'm the, I preach the benefits of of good socks and good yeah. underwear, man. Yeah, you gotta All have them. I'm like I do not mind paying thirty dollars for nope. a pair of boxers or nope. a pair of socks. I'm in the same boat. And so having having a sock with the right amount of structure to it, you know, where it's stretchy, where it needs to be stretchy, mm-hmm. padding where it needs it, you know, that's important. And I, you know, that farm to feet Damascus is a freaking awesome sock i will say i've learned the wonders of uh merino wool compression socks yeah absolutely i I bought some like first light uh like mountain athlete whatever compression socks yeah and they oh my gosh like between those and the crispies yeah like my legs will be wrecked yeah my legs will be wrecked but like it doesn't matter my feet just don't hurt like they don't get that same it's a fantastic sock i've got a couple pair i was wearing them yesterday actually just because i (laughs) I made the mistake of before I stood all day long yeah. in my booth. I made the mistake of going to the gym and oh, geez. It, uh, yeah, those things are lifesavers. So uh, having an having a quality sock is important, but you just got to understand like that insulation isn't. It's not the best place to add insulation. Add yeah. insulation in your boot, not your sock. Which you know it's it's a tough thing to do. I think you made an awesome choice by going with the hunter and knowing, hey, I'm. I'm better off having sweaty feet in Arizona than I am yeah. cold feet on a late season hunt. And I, I think uh, more people should follow suit there. I did the same thing. My first pair of Krispies, um, I did the same thing with. Now that I work there, I'm just, you know, <laughs> boss, can I have these? <laughs> you know, so I ended I'm going to take with, these out. You know, I'm going to see how these work. So, no, it. Uh, I love that guide boot, which is, you know, basically the same boot as you. I think mm-hmm. – um, you know, Sitka did that 90% jacket for years, and I compare yeah. our 200 gram Duratherm equivalent to that. Is you know, you're trying to hit 90% of your season. You know, you're going to make sacrifices on the ends, um, but you know, August yeah. through October, it's right in the wheelhouse for most guys. Now, if you have sweaty feet, if you have cold feet, we maybe shift up or down one, but mm-hmm. I think. Uh, you know, just knowing what sacrifices you're making. If you want a super light boot, just know you're going to be buying a new boot sooner. Yep. You know, you're going to get way more miles out of your guides than a pair of Laponias. Oh, yeah. We're not shy about telling you that. A cactus needle is going to go right through a Cordura. And it, oh, I've noticed. Not, yeah, then, <laughs> you know, leather's going to protect you from cactus needles the best. And that's why I like that Valderez is it's kind of the best of both worlds there. There have been times, man, like I'll pull off the, like when I'm in Arizona and I'm wearing the hunters, like I'll switch back and forth between these. Like yeah. if I'm going out predator calling, I'll just, I'll yeah. throw these on. Like right. I don't care. If if we're going to be doing any hiking, I'll throw on those hunters and stuff. Yeah. And, and uh, though there's actually something I want to touch on with that, but there have been uh, so many times I have, uh, like, been pulling them off, and I'm like, there's just this huge thing of, like, prickly pear cactus, <laughs> like the big old thorn, and then it's like, it just looks like a pin cushion in sure. the side, and I never noticed. Yep. And uh, so it's like, it is nice having that protection. Yeah. It, it's like the other thing, and I, I think I mentioned it earlier, like, they double as a snake boot for me. Like, yeah. you're out in Arizona in August, you do not sit down, you do not take a single step without without looking. Right. Right. And it's uh, you know I was out there for my uh, for my hunt and we probably came came across in the you know whatever the week and a half two weeks I was there uh, at least six or seven rattlers sure like while we were out there walking like oh yeah. <laughs> you need to hear oh, someone man <laughs> I, snake my heart jumps every single time oh, on it I hate it we were in uh, Nevada this year with Dustin who grew up in Southern Nevada yeah and we were walking down a little two track and it. Uh, it was on my side of the two track. We're walking side to side. We just blown a stock on some goats, and it. Uh, I jumped a mile, and he just laughed. And he grew up <laughs> around him, yeah. you know. And he just he. It, they don't face him one bit. Same with Jason. But man, I jump and scream like a little girl yeah. every single time I hear that rattle. Everyone, everyone's got their things. Oh man, like I've got a few, and I am not too proud to admit that rattlesnakes are like, like poisonous strikey yeah. evil oh, snakes man. like all that they they terrify me absolutely terrify me <laughs> i'd rather deal with a bear at least you can see him coming yeah. and like i yeah they, oh any day any yeah, day i would rather abs- deal with a bear yeah i yeah snakes but those whitwer boys man they <laughs> they don't care what one bit so yeah. but uh so the one thing that actually brought it up uh i've noticed with 
my hunters at least is just the shape to the sole. Yeah. How it works is I, I feel sturdy when I'm standing on solid ground, but they always the when you're hiking with them, especially when you got weight, it's you get this momentum going with them. Yeah, so, absolutely. And it's almost weird. Like then, like I'll get back to wherever I'm at. I'll take them off, and I'll walk. And I, it's almost like you know when you you know when you step off like the moving walkways at the airport or something. Okay. Yeah. And you almost feel like I'm not walk. I'm mean, you're right, like walking right. through molasses. Or yep. something. It almost feels like that when sure. I take them off. Like I have to push more to to take my next step. Yeah, when when we board last, that that board last has that shape, and so does that Vibram outsole, but um, it's got a rocker to it, and mm. it's if you've never worn a shoe like that, it's different. And some people at first are like, ah, you know, what's the reason? It's for exactly that. Yeah. Like it it keeps your momentum going. That roll is pretty natural. You're not using all the muscles in your feet to accomplish that flex, yeah. and so you you can kind of walk there. Where if we're walking barefoot you're using all those muscles in your feet. And so it, uh, that rocker's awesome. We do that. That's one of the mm-hmm. benefits of board lasting. Board lasting is a more expensive way to build a boot, but it's a better way to build a boot. Yeah. And so we, and that, that rocker is unique. And when you're, when you're hiking, you can, you can feel it. And it's, it's hard to describe. I think that's probably the best just, way I've heard it. Described. It's just like a momentum. It's, yeah. you notice it more when you take it off than when you put it on. And it's not like, it's not like one of those things where you're standing, like if you have to what? stand there and like hold something, you don't feel like you're rolling right. forward. Right. You've got that stability, but it, it's just when it adds to your momentum right. when you're walking. It's like those shape up things, right? Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why Sam yeah. buys them. It's oh, absolutely. Yep. It, it keeps my uh, glutes looking fantastic. Yep. Absolutely. No, yeah. it's, it's a nice design. I, it's something that I, I forget about mm-hmm. because I'm so used to it after using them for six years. It's just, I don't know any different. But, yeah. Um, no, it is. It's certainly unique to our, to our boot. Yeah. And that kind of also just brings up one other thing I love about those hunters is I, I can't preach these things enough. Um, and it's probably similar with the guides too, is, you know, you're carrying weight, you know, whether it's an elk, whether it's just, you're dumb like me and you packed way too much crap. Yeah. Um, you're carrying heavy weight. You can, like, if you need to stand there for a minute, you can really lock into those boots. You can just kind of drop down into them, yep. and you're not using nearly as much muscle as if, like, as, like, when I'm wearing these Laponia uh, boots. Like, I'm, I'm using all my muscles to hold up everything I'm carrying versus Absolutely. these I can lock into and it's just, and just kind of let, let my bones align yep. and sit down into that boot. I love that feature. Absolutely. And what people don't realize about that support is – all those little muscles, you know, as we're hiking through a scree field, side hilling with weight mm-hmm. on our back, you're not having to work all those little muscles the whole time. Yeah. And so there's a lot of times I like trail running, um, you know, and I, I get made fun of at the Total Archery Challenge every year because I, I hike in, that thing in my Chacos. You know, <laughs> I like to build those muscles up in the off season when I don't have any weight because yeah. I don't want to take an injury. And then I slap those guides on when I when I go hunting. And they, you know, I'll be honest, they three years ago in Idaho, I took a fall, and I'm, I still have a little bit of ankle issues. I didn't roll. I played sports all my life growing up. Never rolled an ankle. Um, and I had those guides on. We had just packed out a bowl. We were back in trying to kill another one. And I, I took a – I had a rock slide out from under me and took a nasty fall Oof. on my ankle. And we were, we were four or five miles of – pretty brutal country um had i broke an ankle or really rolled it hard which i did it would have been tough to get out i yeah. threw down some ibuprofen laced i didn't take my boot off laced it yeah, up that's the one thing I do got, not yeah, <laughs> I pull just, it tighter i just trucked it out of there and it uh you know i still have a little bit of issues with that ankle um i truly feel if i would have had um you know, boot without that support. It was like, mm-hmm. It's like wearing an ankle brace. If I didn't have that support, I would have been in a bad way, especially if I was solo. Mm-hmm. And so it... Uh, well, I'll tell you, my, my Idaho elk hunt, I went in through some nasty stuff and probably went in a bad, a very bad direction. And uh, I'm going through like a couple feet of snow. So I'm crawling over this deadfall, whatever. It's like chest high deadfall half of the time, chest mm-hmm. or knee high deadfall with snow covering the whole thing. So I don't know half of the time if my next step's going to be two inches or two feet. Yeah. And I'm, like, trying to do with the trekking poles yep. as best I can to gauge. But there was a lot of times I'd step down on a on a log, my foot would slip down in and get caught. But I got that momentum going already to get over. 
if I was in a if I was in any other pair of boots other than like maybe a, a, the guides or the yeah. hunters, that would have that wouldn't have broken my ankle. That would have ripped my foot right off. Right, like, right. And I mean that was happening every fifty yards. Yeah. <laughs> like, that uh, yeah that support. It's you know we put ourselves in position hunting where it's it's like a no fall zone when you're yeah. in, you know and it's like. Yeah, you can't take an ankle injury right now, but you have 80 pounds on your back and you're hiking through a screen <laughs> field. It's like, what are we doing? So no, it uh, just just like that scenario, that that support adds a level of like comfort if it's just mentally even, mm-hmm. um, knowing that if something does happen, that's gonna help, you know. And that's just like your situation. I yeah, you know, that's why I like a big heavy boot. Um, not everybody needs it, and we. I'd love to touch base on the Colorado if we have the time. Um, that's a new boot for us that I think is kind of a happy medium for a lot of guys. Yeah, yeah, tell um, us about the Colorado. So Colorado, did you get to try a pair on yesterday? No, you no. checked them out, though. It, uh, you know, we, we took our Summit, which was our best-selling boot in 2018, and we beefed it up a little bit. So we integrated that ankle bone support system that's in your Hunter, mm-hmm. um, that's in the Nevada, um, we put a PU midsole on it to make it a little more durable. Put a four flex on it, just like your hunter. Um, but it's a synthetic upper, so it's going to breathe, you know, high country mule deer, uh, you know, August, September for a guy who's looking for a lightweight boot with the support. It's going to be a kick butt boot. Um, I've been joking around that I designed it. I actually had nothing to do with it. <laughs> um it's a it's a very sharp boot it's like a gray and olive and we're gonna have those in the country in april and we're we've already had some awesome feedback we've got a size run here nice um to try on we've had a couple of our guys um try them out last year jordan bud's got a pair she's going to be doing a review on rock slide with them. fantastic um and yeah it's a it's a boot we're really excited as like a happy medium if you don't want to listen to me and buy a leather boot <laughs> it's it's basically a nevada with synthetic or a beefed up summit Mm -hmm. so it's it's a boot we're pretty psyched on i'm excited to get it on people's feet um and just you know get get the feedback on it so i think it was kind of a hole in our lineup that um they filled really well awesome all right so if people wanted to uh check out the boots online go buy some where where can we find crispy online so um we're at crispyus.com um, we're actually, we like, we love it when you buy our boots from dealers. We build our company on the back of dealers. People like trying on boots. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, you know, we're still a fairly new company here in the States. Um, we're not in every state. We offer free, you know, free returns. When you buy boots online, they come with a return label. Um, but we have a dealer locator if you want to try boots on. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, we're in most states in the West. Um, we're continuing to add as many dealers as we can get on board when it's smart. We like having the right dealers, guys who really know and can sell quality footwear. Um, so we do have a dealer locator if you want to check them out. Otherwise, crispyus.com. We've got our whole um, size run on there. Um, and you can also buy them on Black Ovis. BlackOvis.com. I would I would greatly appreciate it if you uh, visited Black Ovis from LivingCountryInTheCity.com slash crispy. That will take you to a listing of uh, all the boots, the whole product line that is available on Black Ovis. And that means you're helping support Living Country in the City. I like it. And Black Ovis, you know, they're one of the few dealers that will carry our wide boots. Mm-hmm. They carry... Which I, yeah. I had to get. I yeah. had to get the wide. I got friggin' duck feet. Yeah, and we, you know, they carry the, the, the majority of our brand. So if you're looking for a dealer, because MSRP, so if you go through the website, um, we're more expensive than our dealers. We're trying, we're at MSRP, our dealers are at MAP. So if you go through Black Ovis, um, through Sam's website, <laughs> um, you know, you're going to get the best price you can get at Black Ovis. So yeah. um, on the widest selection of our boots, uh, Shields carries a good selection of our boots online as well. Um, they've got locations kind of all over the Midwest and a few in the West. Um, but we've got a lot of good dealers. Um, and, you know, we want we want people to support those dealers. We sell our boots online. You're going to pay about 10 bucks more and it's, you're going <laughs> to pay for shipping. So, but. There you go. All right, man. Well, thanks for sitting down, taking the time, uh, catching everyone up on uh, the hunting and hiking boot selection. Well, thanks for having me. I, we really appreciate you being here, and I uh, 
I appreciate what you're doing with the show here, man. I, there's a lot of people who do podcasts in this show, and Sam's the guy. He's grinding harder than everybody <laughs> else. He's, uh, every time I see him, he's got these headphones on, and he's grabbing a ton of good content from a ton of good people. I, lo- I love this show because it's like all the cool kids come into town. I got to see, <laughs> you know, my buddy Mark Smith and South Cox is here, and I, I just, you know, Sam's here. <laughs> I'm here. No, it's, uh, this show's awesome, and Sam's been running around working harder than probably anybody else. So, <laughs> Awesome, man. Well, make sure you all check that out at uh, crispyus.com yep. or uh, livingcountryinthecity.com slash crispy yep. with an I. With an I. No Y. Yeah. <laughs> and we do sell Krispy Kreme, but it's not delicious. Don't oh, eat it. Oh, man, I want to. <laughs> Don't even say that. All right, yeah. I'm ending this before I start fantasizing about Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. All right, y'all, that'll do it for episode 106 of Living Country in the City. Thank you to Corey for taking time out of the expo and sitting down with me to talk about Krispy. Y'all make sure you head on over to the show notes page at livingcountryinthecity.com slash 106. Check out links to everything we talked about in today's episode. Also, y'all make sure you head on over to Sawyer.com slash Lyme hyphen disease and keep yourself and your family protected from ticks and the nasty little things they carry all of this summer. But until next time, keep it country, y'all. Thank y'all for listening to Living Country in the City. Get show notes and check out the blog, product reviews, events, and more at livingcountryinthecity.com.